Petra is an archaeological city in southern Jordan, located amidst rugged canyons and mountains. Constructed in prehistoric times, Petra's distinctiveness lies in being half-built and half-carved into red, white, pink and sandstone cliffs. The red color of the stone has led to Petra being referred to as the Rose City. Petra is also recognized as one of the new seven wonders of the world and as the most popular tourist destination in Jordan. It is a significant historical and cultural site and has even been named a World Heritage Site by UNESCO. A city like no other, whose praises are mentioned throughout history, Petra is among the most visually stunning archaeological sites in the world. Believed to have been established as early as 312 BC, Petra later came under Roman rule. Masters of technology, the Nabataeans constructed a fully functional water system for the city. Famous for being half-carved into the mountain, Petra makes for a truly unique site. The city contains marvels such as the narrow yet long seek the treasury, the temple of winged lions, the great temple and even a dam. It is a city for enthusiasts of history and marvelous architecture. Petra is also famous as the city where the popular Hollywood movie Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade was shot in 1989. The approach to Petra is through the Sikh, which is narrow in some places. Just before the end of the Sikh, there is a split in the rock, which provides an unforgettable view of the monastery. Petra lies in a line from Wadi Musa town, and the visitors follow the trail into Sikh, treasury, royal tombs and Roman ruins. Those with time or staying for another day continue to the monastery. A must-have experience here is Petra by night, where three nights a week, the area around the Sikh and the treasury is lit by 1500 candles and looks magical. Entry to Petra is only allowed to visitors with valid tickets. The tickets vary for one-day visitors to Jordan, those who visit Jordan from some other country and don't stay overnight, or multi-day visitors. These tickets are available at the visitor center and can be purchased online before arrival. Licensed tour guides can also be booked from the visitor center for JD50 to JD100. The best time to visit Petra is early morning or late afternoon, so start early. You may have seen images of Petra, or its most famous structure, the treasury, in magazines, documentaries or movies, but it's not till you're there that you begin to feel a real sense of awe for the place. Petra has formed the backdrop for many films, including Indiana Jones and The Last Crusade, a tribute to its mystery and charm that continues to captivate visitors right to this day. The approach to the city is through a spectacular red sandstone gorge that, in some parts, is only a few meters wide. Just before the end of the gorge, the Sikh, the split in the rocks provides an unforgettable preview of the city's most astounding monument, the treasury. Past the treasury, the gorge opens out into a broad plain where other buildings including the amphitheater, all hewn from the rock face, are located. Here are my suggestions for what to do in Petra. Seeing Petra during the day is an awe-inspiring experience for most visitors. By night, the ancient city transforms into what must be one of the most magical places in the world. Thousands of candles guide visitors through the Sikh, a canyon, to the main square where the treasury is located, making a visit to Petra by night one of the most unique things to do in Jordan. It's a truly romantic experience and a perfect place to pop the question, for those planning to do so. This is a great thing to do in the evenings if you've already seen Petra by night. The Petra Kitchen, located along the main road in Wadi Musa, a few 
Hundred yards away from the main entrance to Petra, is a lovely place that promises an educational and fun-filled evening. Visitors don gloves and aprons, and under the supervision of the restaurant's chefs, learn how to create typical Jordanian dishes. The Seek is a canyon that connects the city of Petra with the outside world. It's a wondrous experience to walk on thousand-year-old cobblestones and see the curvy rock face in a multitude of colors. Look for traces of ancient dams and water channels used by the Nabataeans to control the water supply into the city. As the Seek was the main entrance to the city, the Nabataeans carved magnificent statues and arches along the Seek. Little of it can be seen today but look carefully, what may at first look like a hump in the rock face may actually be a carving of a camel. Another interesting person to look up is Marguerite van Geldermelsen who was a backpacker from New Zealand. She visited Petra in the 1970s and fell in love with Muhammad, a local Bedouin, and she never left. Her heartwarming story about being married to a Bedouin and adjusting to the lifestyle is a great read and I highly recommend it if you're visiting Petra. There are numerous trails which lead hikers through the mountains and to breathtaking vantage points such as the High Place of Sacrifice. It's a great way to discover lesser-known ruins like Little Petra, as well as admire colorful and strange rock formations. This is a desert climate so wear appropriate clothing, a cap and proper hiking shoes are a must, and bring plenty of water and some food. Avoid venturing off the path and make sure you get back to the main gate before dark. Information about guides and trails can be obtained from the Petra office at the main entrance. The monastery is another of Petra's highlights. Located in the mountains above Petra, it's a moderately difficult hike to the top, especially in the afternoon heat. An alternative to hiking to the monastery is to ride a mule up. It's fun and quite harrowing at times but you'll get there in good shape. A one-way ride to the monastery costs 10 dinars, about $15. At the monastery, near the small cafe, you'll spot a sign pointing you in the direction of, the best view. It's a short hike uphill and the view of the monastery and the surrounding mountains is stunning. Petra Wadi Musa is a great place to shop for traditional Jordanian and Nabataean handicrafts. You can visit various Bedouin tents in Petra, near the Roman ruins, and learn about the culture of the various tribes as well as local community initiatives to improve the livelihoods of the Bedouin. These places have a modest collection of silverware, stone carvings, embroidery and pottery. There is a bigger variety in the Wadi Musa Township. The Nabateen Ladies Cooperative of Wadi Musa is an initiative that focuses on the production and sale of silverware and jewelry to wholesalers and tourists, thereby creating jobs for the women in the township. The cooperative operates a modest retail outlet along the main street in Wadi Musa. After a day of trekking through Petra, there's no better way to soothe those aching muscles and rid yourself of the dust and sand than to check into a hammam, or Turkish bath. There are several hammams in Wadi Musa, the township adjacent to Petra, that serve both male and female clientele. A typical hammam session consists of a steam bath, a body scrub and an oil massage. I stayed at the Mubinpik Resort Petra. An excellent base from which to explore Petra as it's situated right next to the main entrance. Its Arabic-style interior is stunning, not to mention inviting. The atrium is beautiful but make your way to the adjacent bar for a drink. The interior of the bar is absolutely gorgeous.